Hey, so welcome back and this is another daily code problem. So today I thought we'd do actually three different questions. So these are all backtracking problems. So I just thought we would uh, take them one by one and do all three of them. So let's start with combinations. So um, for this one, and I won't show you the answer just yet, but essentially what you want to do is you're given two integers here, n and k, and all they represent is essentially you want to come up with all possible combinations of k numbers. And so in this case, when you're creating these combinations, you have to use at least two of them. So like one and two, or one and three, one and four, etc. So they're always going to be in pairs because, well, you want to have at least two, and at most two, so only two. Um, and then also, um, those numbers uh, have to range between one and n. And so in that case, well, uh, they have to range between one and four. And so given this formula, you would want to output uh, this two-dimensional array. And so the first thing that I thought of um, when doing this is typically the pattern for these backtracking problems is uh, you define a sum backtrack uh, function here. And so we're going to call it. And so generally, uh, what you see is that, especially for something like this, like you would have uh, some particular um, index or pointer uh, point to like the current number that you're looking at um, as well as like the current set that you're trying to build which in this case would be like a pair here so let's go ahead and define that so um, we'll just define it as like i which is like the current number um, often you're dealing with arrays but this so i use i as the index but in this case it's really just i is some number um, between one and n and then also uh, what we want here is the current, I guess, um, set that you're trying to build. And so in that case, why don't we define that as um, an array? Okay, and so, and we'll call that um, maybe just something like current. And so from here, naturally, we're gonna want to define like our base case of what's going to be kind of propagating our answer up the chain. And so what that's gonna be is, okay, like we need to, um, return our answer once we've seen that, okay, we have at least two valid numbers, or I guess really k valid numbers in this new pair. And so what that looks like is, okay, um, if the length of our current pair is basically equal to our target size, which is two in this case, or k, uh, let's go ahead and we will um, propagate that answer um, up the recursive chain. All right, and so in this case, um, we also want to handle, okay, otherwise uh, we want to do something else and we want to consider all possible combinations. And with a lot of these backtracking problems to consider all possible like combinations or permutations or whatever you're dealing with, um, you want to find a for loop within that range. And so what we're going to do is looking at this, you can see that none of these numbers repeat, like you only do uh, one, then two, like you won't ever have like one and one or two threes or something like that or two ones and a two, like you only want to have like one instance of every uh, number here. And so in that case, we kind of want to consider all the numbers um, onwards from I is what I'm trying to say here. And so what that looks like is, okay, let's consider all these numbers and we'll actually change I to maybe start um, just to define what's like our starting number. So let's define all the numbers in this range from our starting number all the way to our max number, which is uh, n plus one here, right? Because Python's non-inclusive and we wanna use that um, n. And so from here onwards, uh, we're gonna wanna be calling this backtracking function. And so with that, what we're gonna do is, uh, well, we wanna define like the current index that we're at, which is i. Um, and then we're also going to want to go ahead and update this, uh, basically this current array that we have with this new number that we're adding, which is nums at this particular index, right? So we're basically just concatenating or appending uh, to this current uh, set that you have with this new number. And I guess it's not nums at i, I'm so used to dealing with arrays, it would simply be i as an array. And so just looking at this, um, What's missing here is that, okay, we want to deal with that um, case where, okay, um, we don't want to repeat the starting index or else we'll keep 
uh, recursively hitting this and kind of go in an infinite loop. And so I believe what we want to do here is when we call the backtracking function, let's just increment i. So the next iteration, um, you're moving onwards from there. And the other thing here is, well, we want to be returning this two-dimensional array. And so currently, all that we're doing is we're kind of pending to this current array, but we're not propagating that answer um, up the chain. And so in that case, what we're going to do is we want to add the answer uh, when we hit this case. And so to do that, uh, the typical pattern for backtracking is just that you define like a response variable that's global in nature. And this is what we're expecting to return here. Now, once again, our starting index, I just had to fill this in, will be at zero. And then also, okay, when do we actually want to append this particular answer? Well, it's right here. And so let's just go ahead and append um, the current array. And just for safety, we can copy it so that as you're altering this array, uh, nothing happens here. Um, let's see what we got wrong. So looks like we have too many answers. So we're starting at index zero and that's why. And so let's go ahead and start at index one because we want to do in range one to n. And submit and success. So that's the first problem here. Let's go ahead and try uh, the other backtracking problem, which was a combination sum, I believe. So let's try this one and not look at the answer just yet. Um, so this one, I did all these earlier this morning. So uh, candidates is an array with a target seven, right. And so essentially all that we wanna do here is pick out these numbers in here that basically add up to seven and let's make them a set. So it's okay if they repeat. You can see that two only occurs once in this array. Um, but we're allowed to reuse these numbers. So that's kind of a variation here. Um, we're also dealing with like an array now, and but we're still trying to hit like a particular target. It's just now it's like the summation. All right, so to do this, why don't we go ahead and um, kind of build out this pattern. So um, what we're gonna define is once again, that response variable, and we're expecting to return this. Uh, we'll define our backtrack function here and naturally we're going to want to call it before we return our response. And so what's our base case? Well, that's when we hit our target here. So if um, the current running number, and so we'll want to keep track of what's the current running uh, total here. So the current total, which initially will be zero, but if the current is hitting our target, then we want to return this new like, combination. And so let's go ahead and we want to append basically this current combination that we have. So um, instead of current, we'll call this like total, as in the total sum. And then we'll have like a current uh, set that we're dealing with, uh, which initially is empty. But by this point on, we expect it um, to be filled with the values that hit this target. And so we want to uh, append that to our result. Otherwise, let's go ahead and um, view all these possible different combinations here. And so in order to do that, well, once again, we want to make a for loop um, in a particular range. And so what this is going to be is basically whatever the current index is. Um, let's just say start all the way to the length of our candidates, because that's the kind of maximum index that you can go to, because we're only considering like this list of numbers. So let's go ahead and do that. So length of our candidates array. And so we have to go ahead and define this index here. So our start, well, we wanna start at index zero. So let's go ahead and set that to zero. And so from here, um, what you can imagine is that, okay, the reason why we're not doing like start plus one anywhere is here is because we still want to reconsider numbers that we've used in the past. So this is allowing us to once again, uh, not be starting at like start plus one, but we want to be able to consider uh, this particular number again, if we want to. And so naturally this is a recursive solution. So let's go ahead and call this function. We can uh, call it with index I because we're choosing to use um, the number at this particular index. 
And then from here, uh, we also want to pass whatever the current array is. And so basically we've chosen to use the uh, candidate at index i here. So let's append that to our current array or current combination really. And so from here, the only thing that remains is our total. So just keep track of um, whatever value we just appended and that's stored at that same uh, location here. So I think that looks good. I don't see anything wrong right now, but we'll see. Might be, yeah, memory limit exceeded. So what could that be? Um, so we have our response here and we call our backtracking function with our result. If the total, so I guess we could um, prune the number of recursive calls that we do. So we only want to do it um, if it appears valid and that would be okay. Um, if our total um, or if our current, yeah, running total plus whatever number we're looking to add, which is this particular number that we're looking at, as long as that's less than or equal to our uh, target here, let's go ahead and recursively call this. Let's try this one and success. So that's all you need to do to uh, pass that uh, time limit exceeded actually. So I'm glad I remember that or I don't remember. I just kind of came up with it. Um, combination sum. Let's try this one. Don't look at what I put this morning. And let's try this. So this one, combination sum. I think we just did this. Did we just do this one? Yeah, it's a few seconds ago. I have one more I wanted to do. So combination sum, combinations, oh, subsets. This is the other one. So this one, I won't look at the answer just yet. All right, so given an array nums of unique elements return all the possible subsets. So we're given a uh, array here. We just wanna consider and output these subsets. So what that is, is essentially, I kind of think of it as all the possible combinations where uh, you don't want to reuse these numbers and you can actually have an empty one. Um, and the ordering doesn't matter, like one comma two, uh, you don't also want to include two comma one. So you just want to have um, one iteration of these sets. So, okay, let's go ahead and try this. So what I'm thinking is, and just to put you back into uh, my frame of thinking, is we typically have the same pattern here. So let's go ahead and try that. Um, and then we want to define our backtracking problem here or backtracking uh, method. And of course we wanna go ahead and call it. And so with this, we're gonna to wanna to have some base case, uh, but we don't really, I think the only base case is that we wanna stop um, recursively calling once we hit the end of this array. So if the current index which starts at zero here. So if I is kind of greater than or really equal to the length of the input array, then we're gonna to wanna to stop uh, from here. So let's not continue any further. Um, otherwise, we want to continue um, considering these subsets. And so what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna have some uh, current once again. So the current uh, subset that we're looking at, which is initially empty. And let's go ahead and add that uh, to our uh, response here. So we're gonna do current and we will copy it. So there's a deep clone in case any of our recursive calls alters of this array. And so from here, well, we're gonna to want to consider all the possible combinations moving forward from here. So uh, for I in the range and for now, I'm just gonna set as i to the length of our numbers. And so generally you want to do a recursive call from this point on. And so do we wanna add anything special here? This is usually uh, where there's a special case and let's set this as start again so that this can be i. So the only thing here is, yeah, like you don't want to reuse numbers that you've previously 
uh, used in the past. And so if the current number is that, then we want to add it, but we want to skip it the next iteration. And so basically we're going to call i plus one moving forward so that the new starting one doesn't recursively repeat uh, the index that we're at. So you don't want to use like one, one, right? You want to move on to considering two from that point on. And so the only other thing here is that, okay, uh, what is our new uh, subset that we're looking at, which is going to be current uh, plus that number that we're looking at, which is nums at i. So I think this looks good. Let's try running it. Oh, something's wrong here. So I don't go all the way to three. Why is that? Oh, well, we want to uh, not exclude that. So it's non-inclusive in Python. Um, so length of the numbers plus one, why'd that go out of range? Nums at i. Let's think here. Um, No, this should be fine. You want to have that because you would definitely go out of bounds here. So we do do that tricky case of the empty one. Then we have two, one, two, and then one, three. Why are we not considering one, three? Hmm. This is the starting index. That looks good. I guess we could um, invert this, but no. Why don't we start at index negative one? Negative one. And then keep that, and we do the plus one here. or here. There we go, success. So I think that's just an edge case um, where I was kind of confused why we can't just increment the i plus one here. But I think just when you're looking at enough of these problems, you just kind of figure out um, that there's something wrong on the end edge case. And so I thought rather than looking forward, you should look kind of lagging. It's hard to describe. I think it's just the intuition that uh, when you do a lot of problems, it comes to you. But I also did these three problems this morning before I made this video. So uh, I'm sure that that helped too. But anyways, I hope this helped a little bit. I hope you learned a little bit about backtracking. I just want to showcase it's really just all about patterns. There's typically a general template uh, for a lot of these problems. You just have to uh, tweak it to the algorithm in uh, whatever you're solving. So yeah, hope it helped a little bit and good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Thanks for watching.